Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Small Business and Entrepreneur Podcast with Harlequin Podcast. I hope y'all are doing great out there. Today, we are going to go on a little trip because I have a good friend of mine with me, Rosanna Taylor, and she is a travel agent. Welcome to the show, Rosanna. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for inviting me. This is exciting. Yes. So we met through networking a couple of weeks ago. Um, you're here in the Rockwall, Northeast Dallas area. Um, and I can hear on your accent, you're not born at least in the Texas. <laughs> yes, that is true. I was born in Peru. Uh, in 2017, I did my naturalization and I became an American citizen. And uh, I moved from Peru to Dallas area in 2004. So you've been was... here a couple of years. Yes. yes. How did uh, Peru different from Dallas? That must have been quite oh a change. Yes. Oh, yes, it's completely different. The dynamics, the, the way that we live in Peru. Peru, it's uh, very family oriented. It's, it's at least in my time, you don't leave your house until you're married. So you could be 20, 25, 26, 30, and still living with your parents. It's not like yeah, here in America, right. your kids at 18 years old, they are gone because they're gone to college and they don't come to live with you again. So right. that, that was a big, big change for me because I was living still, I was 37 years old living still with my parents because I was a single in the family. So I came here to America to visit a friend. And well, things work different. So I stayed here. I met my husband, we got married and I had to really learn to do all those things that uh, like at home, I was, uh, let's say a privileged child because my parents were uh, in good economic situation. So we always have mates. We have somebody to come and do our laundry, somebody to do uh, all the landscaping and somebody to come and wash our cars. So here in America, I have to learn to do all of that by myself because the culture here is do it yourself. Everything right. is do it yourself. <laughs> so I was okay. That was a big change for me. That So do you think being from Peru has influenced and helped you? going into the travel business how how did you even start in the travel business okay back in peru when i was a teenager finishing oh. school i wanted to study a career in travel and tourism but there were no offers for that in the universities you can only obtain like uh becoming a tour guide and i was saying no that's not what i what i want so i had to study business administration and then when I moved here, of course, uh, on my young uh, years, when I was still a student, I was traveling with my friends through Peru. Then in my young 20s, I went on a solo trip around South America, then Europe. So my passion was always there. I think it started when my dad took us to road trips when we were very little or took us to climb the mountains. He always get us active in adventurous activities. And my passion is adventure, discover new things, go to new places, find new flavors. And I'm a big foodie. So that, that is, uh, has been always there. So when I was uh, looking for opportunities to do something, when my son was very young, uh, I found that I could become a travel agent. I, I found a host agency named KHM Travel Group. So I decided to join them and they gave me all the training and everything that I needed to run a, a travel agency business. And it has been a bliss because it combined my passion for travel and my love to help people with, with something like that. Interesting. So I have to ask, what is your own favorite destination? Oh, I have several. <laughs> well, Peru is, is uh, uh, I guess because I'm from there, it's a country that I love and I think it has so many unique features, so many places for people that love the beaches, for people that love the mountains, 
iconic places like Machu Picchu, the, for food lovers like me, it's paradise. So Peru, of course, is one of the most important for me. And then I love Europe just because all those ancient cities that tell so many stories. I love those castles and cobblestone streets that it, it make you transport into the past, into history. So my favorite in Europe will be France, Italy, Greece, Germany. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I've, I've lived in Europe most of my life. So of course I've, I've traveled that part of the world more than anything, I think. So uh, Greece, it, within Europe, Greece is a country I still want to go and see. But it, I've, other than that, I've probably seen most of it at least. Greece and Ireland. Is, is probably a place. So where where does your clients go the most? Because you are a little bit uh, specialized in celebration travel, correct? Yes, yes. I do celebrations and romance travel. Celebrations will be families, for example, that are celebrating a milestone birthday or are celebrating a graduation in the family, or somebody got engaged and they went to a bachelorette or bachelor party, um, anything, family reunions. And then um, romance travel is honeymoons, anniversaries, romantic escapes, destination weddings that is so popular these days for couples. It just so because it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's because it's cheaper to get married at a destination than getting married here in America. True. So, it's, uh, it, things are expensive, but isn't it kind of if you have family coming along on your wedding? Well, not many, maybe on the honeymoon, but if you're getting married um, abroad, then maybe you want to have some family, and that gets quite expensive too, I guess. Uh, not really, because when you get a destination wedding, you cover for your your expense, let's say your room, plus mm -hmm. the package wedding most of the resorts offers very very good packages for you that includes the welcome cocktail for you and your guests the ceremony the rehearsal dinner uh, the dinner after the the ceremony and sometimes even it's included uh two or three hours for party so it depends on the package that the bride will choose but uh, just talking last week with a bride, she was considering a wedding for a hundred, a hundred guests, and here in America, it will cost her like sixty thousand dollars. So we were checking for packages in Mexico in Cancun, and we found that it could be a package up to seventy nine guests, uh, ten thousand. So it's a big difference. Wow. But uh, yeah, but of course your guests must must be willing to travel that that's the main thing because that, that's kind of the every, point. everybody that is going has to pay their own for their own room their their own airfare yeah of course that that excludes a lot of of uh, but it also hinders probably a lot of people that may not be able to afford to go <laughs> yes yes uh, most but, of the couples let's say if you have a list of a hundred uh, guests probably only 50 to 60% of those guests are actually going to attend the wedding because yes, not everybody will be able to afford it. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you've got to take time out of your schedule, take off work. It's still yes. a lot of, even though it's kind of, if you're going to get married and you want to do it on a trip, that's a very cool thing to do though. What's the most not awkward, but interesting thing you've ever booked when it comes to travel that they want to do? Um, People many, like years ago, many years ago, yeah, many years ago, I had a, a family from Mexico that they were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary and they wanted to have something really special in the in in a museum or or, or in a place that is uh, different than just the regular restaurant mm -hmm. so i was able to coordinate with my with my tour operator in peru and we found that there's a museum in, in cusco 
that has like a restaurant in it. And we were able to book that uh, that restaurant and we brought mariachis because they were they were from Mexico. And for them it was a super special touch to celebrate in that way. So they always remember that. I bet, I bet. So do you have the opportunity and time to travel anything yourself at all? Yes, actually, I prefer to do, you know, as a travel agent, you always are invited to go in what they call familiarization trips, mm -hmm. where you go to, where you go and visit the destination and visit several resorts. So I did that at the beginning of my travel agency, but the last three or four years, I prefer to take my family with me as a vacation and then take one or two days to go and visit those places that I want to know, that I want to sell, or that my clients are asking about. So yes, I, I take always the time to try to be always knowledgeable about resorts, what is coming, what is new, what are the offers, and try to see them firsthand. I like to offer uh, advice based on, on, on my knowledge. Right, right. Yeah, it makes it easier, I guess, to sell something that you have seen or and met people yourself. I yes. Guess that, so where does people want to go the most? Is it still here, South America, or is it far away? Uh, I have, I will say 90% of the clients still choose Mexico and the Caribbean for their honeymoon, their weddings, all of that. Uh, but I'm seeing in the last three years also a big trend for South America and for uh, Europe. A lot of uh, couples are requesting places like uh, Italy, Spain, Iceland. Iceland I is coming popular, for example. Yeah. That's cold. It's, it's cold. Yeah. It's very exotic, I guess, for Americans. It's very, but... and, and it's a. Uh, uh, I have seen families requesting Iceland, and I have seen uh, honeymoon couples requesting that, for example. And well, uh, yeah, I guess if you're gonna yeah. do something special and different, Iceland will definitely be a place. Bring yeah. your coat and right yeah, for those who are super, super adventurous and want want to be out and active, yes, Iceland is the, is the destination that they choose. Right. Just be prepared of, um, I once flew, um, and landed in Iceland, just a quick turnover and the flight in to Reykjavik. Oh my God. We ended up in the probably worst turbulence I've ever, ever in my life experienced. Oh my God. We were away from Stockholm to, to New York and just uh, lay over in, in uh, Reykjavik. And my mom was a flight attendant for 17 years. So she knew mm -hmm. flying. You know, I come from a flight family. So, but when you find your mom sitting and holding on for oh dear life, yeah, that's scary. <laughs> pray that we're going to land <laughs> and people are literally just screaming bloody murder. And we landed, <laughs> nothing happened. But after that, I'm like, I am, if I'm going to Iceland, that's one thing. But I'm not landing in Iceland if I don't have to after that turbulence. It would, it, whew. yeah, be prepared of that. <laughs> and that's just how the weather and all the dynamics in the air is up there, that it's often kind of turbulent. Oh, so it's an often oh. to have it. Oh my God. Yeah. Just the last, like, last 20, 30 minutes. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, that was, that was, just that was an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and which month was that? Maybe it was the summer month? No, it was uh it was winter. It was probably okay. January, it was probably February, March. Yeah. Okay. Because our luggage, <laughs> this was a trip out of out of I don't know what, but our luggage ended up in Barcelona and didn't even oh. make it to New York. And I was only I was about 15 years old when this happened. And so my mom was doing all the, the uh, planning and stuff. And this was one of the few trips that she actually did travel insurance. So with oh. our luggage 
now being in Barcelona, us being in New York, we went on a shopping spree in New York. I'll tell you, that was awesome. And it took a couple of days for our luggage to make it to New York. And that was almost the time for us to go back home. And I'm glad you're bringing that because it's it's very important that when you're booking your trip, you also book your trip insurance because things like that will happen. You might have a misconnection and and you might need to purchase a new airfare or or you might need uh, to replace the, your entire luggage. So travel is always always uh, risky some, somehow. There are things that could happen and, and you need to make sure that your investment is protected. Right. Yeah. I, I learned that on that trip that travel insurance was a very good thing to 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 pay and so I have to ask you, you've been in this business for how many years now? Uh, I have been doing this since 2011. Let's say when I first started, I will say late up to 2015, it was more like a hobby. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, okay, I will learn this, I will learn that, but I really didn't take it too much professionally. I was working with pretty much friends, family, people that I know. But then in 2015, I decided, well, I really want to make this as a as a, a, a way to generate an income for me, to grow in my career. So since that, uh, I've been taking that path of specialization and niching out. And that's how in 2019, I obtained my certification as a destination weddings expert, because it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing it's uh, i love what i do i'm passionate about this i can guarantee i can assure you that so now i have to ask you how have you seen people's travel habits and wants and needs change before and after covid because you had a couple of years there where travel wasn't a thing like it was shut down yeah. do you see that yes with covid obviously affected people but how did it affect people uh in my case when when uh covid hit many travel agencies around just shut doors Mm -hmm. i lost completely all my sales i'm I'm being honest i'm still in process of recovering because i have to kind of like rebuild my business from zero right clients that do travel with me they were in their 60s 60s and above so that clientele either or no longer is traveling because they got scared and they they prefer now to do more local uh, like uh, travel inside the united states instead of going abroad so that is what brought me okay i need to do a big change in my business and i need to target younger generations because no matter what they're going to travel and um, more if they are in their honeymoon or if they are planning their destination wedding, they are not going to just cancel. They will they will find a way to still make it work. So that's what brought me to really niche out on, on this uh, romance travel and, and celebrations even more than what I was doing. And yes, it changed a lot. I, it makes many people very scary. So for example, right now, it's a big buzz in the news and everywhere in, in the travel circle. It's uh, about Jamaica, that the government has raised uh, state three level that is dangerous to go to Jamaica. And everybody's, oh, no, I don't want to book Jamaica. But it's uh, the risk is everywhere. If I live here in Dallas area. If I go to downtown, I have to be careful. I have to know where I am. I need to know my surroundings, which is safe, where is not. And it's the same going to Jamaica. If you stay in your hotel, your hotel zone in the touristic area, and you book your things through a trusted tour operator to a trusted travel agent, you should not have problems. Right. So it's the same anywhere in Europe. Every country will have areas that are risky, but it's just that everything is exacerbated since COVID, anything that happens in any destination it it just grows exponentially and 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 it's not fair for the destination to suffer that for example no absolutely not and and as you say 
we live here in DFW area and it doesn't matter where you are. You can just go to your local Walmart as time has become today. And just that can be super risky regardless where you live. And you can just yes. go to a different Walmart where you don't know the surroundings as well as you do on your normal Walmart and you have the same problem. So uh, I bet the, the tourist industry is affected a lot about that. Yes, when they are, when they are, uh, it's like extremely sensitive. If there's riotings in, in Europe, then people don't want to travel to Europe. Or if they hear, okay, the government has, uh, I think a couple of years ago, Cancun was like that, like Jamaica right now, that, okay, no, no Cancun because it's a, it's a dangerous, it's a, it's a gang, it's drug trafficking and this and that. And that really affects the countries really affected tourism and and our obligation as travel agents is to educate people and, and make them understand that for one bad apple you cannot punish the whole country or the whole industry right if they do the right things they're going to be safe in their trip so you have to basically also not only know all the destinations but basically be on top of all the world news uh that may yes that may happen in whatever it is on all your destinations or basically overall just to educate and calm down your clients exactly i i, I have to do that i have to educate them and i always share with them um once a client book with me i make sure that i stay connected to them i send them always emails guiding step by step until they go to the destination and part of my process includes sending them uh, information about where to register in programs that if anything happened in the destination, the government knows where they are so they can be, they can receive help evacuating and all of that. Um, uh, make sure that they install their apps in their phones, like uh, their, their travel insurance that has all the information about the area where they're going to be telling them where exactly is the, the nearest, um, let's say, medical center, the nearest uh, pharmacy. So because things happen, you can be at your hotel and you can get sick and you don't know what to do, where to go. So if you have your travel insurance, you have your app in your in your phone, you will know exactly where to go and what to do. The technology in that sense must, must have helped a lot. It does. Because I'm it's super I'm important. Yeah, I have not been traveling except when I moved here. Um, but like what we call recreational traveling abroad uh, for probably what, 25, 20 years, 20, 25 years. And that was actually on a cruise with my grand, grandmother and her friends. I knew them as well, good old family friends. There was not any apps to get. It was before yeah. the phone, right? So there yeah. were no apps and there was no thing like that and i i just remember i had the advantage of just having a u.s passport because we went with the cruise went out of uh, miami florida and but it was also kind of complicated to not have i had a swedish and an american passport but while you're in the u.s you have to have use your american passport completely understandable um but that was also a little bit there was nothing called app and travel insurance but it was a lot of paperwork that i that i coordinated yeah all that's of us. Deal. yeah yeah that that's incredible because now you can have in your in your phone you can have your boarding pass mm -hmm. for the airport so that that uh release all the stress of having to carry this paper and that paper but even though we have all this technology that help us, I always like also to send my clients a printed copy of their travel documents mm -hmm. because sometimes you could be at the airport and the internet is not working. And if you are waiting on your phone to upload your boarding pass or to upload your itinerary or something, it, it increased the levels of stress that you're already experiencing. So oh, yeah. to give them peace of mind, I, I like them to have a printed documents, okay. If your phone is not uploading, it's okay. Here's your your, Here's your, your boarding pass or whatever that, that you need to have. What are people most panicking over? Is it more about the, the world situation or is it something reoccurring that you see 
that you can tell that don't or do this? Uh, I see a lot of stress on those that are first time travelers that uh, they, are, they have never been outside the United States, so they don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I feel that uh, there's kind of like more anxiety because how I'm going to get to my hotel, uh, uh, do they speak? english everywhere uh, i'm gonna be able to get my food and so that's why i like to guide in a step by step and say don't worry i, I my packages always include airfare their transfers from the airport to the hotel back to the airport uh, i will make sure that if it's let's say an all-inclusive explain them what what is exactly going to be included what what are all the things that are included on in the package and if it's somebody going to Europe, I make sure that they un understand their itinerary day by day, what is going to happen, where they're going to be picked up to go on excursions, and that uh, everything is already coordinated. So the only thing that they need to do, okay, I need to stand in this corner on this on this on this part of the hotel, or go to the location that is very near to the hotel, and my my tour is going to be waiting for me, and it's going to have a name on on a on a banner so i'll i'll be able to find them so it's just explaining them and making sure every step has been covered you don't need to worry they are going to find you so you're that's, that's the main thing. yes you're not going to get lost you're, and and the other thing is i always you know give them my whatsapp number so when they are traveling at any time they can call me or they can text me so they can stay in touch with me if they are so nervous and say, hey, my tour is not coming, I can contact the tour company that is going to pick them up and say, hey, they are waiting. Where are you guys? Are you? Right. Not many times I say, they're just five minutes away. Just wait. Right. Yeah, often it's just the unknown. And if you haven't traveled, of course, it's... it's yes, it's the, all the unknown. It's all the uncertainty and, and the language barrier in many cases, right? Because if you are... In Europe, let's say you're in France and you don't speak the language, then it's anxiety. <laughs> Nothing against Japan, <laughs> but you pick the best best ever country since um, I think it's 80% of the French TV and radio broadcasting has to be in French. They do not uh, like to speak English. They do it, yes. they know it, they teach it, but French people, it is disrespectful to come and speak English in France. <laughs> I say yeah, that. They will prefer right. you to, if you go approach to them in Spanish, they will be super nice. You approach to them in English and they don't like it. Mm -hmm, mm -mm. In French is the same way, you know, and, and it was, yeah, um, yeah I, I have been in France a lot when I was younger and I traveled through, because I had horses and we were traveling through, through Paris to a farm to drop these horses off. And I'm literally driving an a dry, um, 18 wheelers with six big horses and there is construction. Uh -huh. And I took the wrong, <laughs> took the wrong way. And I'm literally <laughs> ending up with an 18 wheeler. <laughs> oh <my laughs> That's not where an 18 wheeler should be. And I get pulled over by this French police officer and he is, Old and grumpy. I'm sorry. That's what he is. And I'm Swedish. Yeah. The truck is Swedish registered. Um, there is nothing that can tell that I speak fluently French. So I look at my friend yeah. who barely speaks English because she just doesn't like speaking to strangers, nor does she mm -hmm. like to be outside of Sweden. And I just said, you be quiet. Mm -hmm. You don't even know anything. <laughs> so I play stupid. <laughs> And I said, I am so sorry, sir. Um, and I don't know where I am, but this is where I'm going. But this is not where this truck is supposed to be. And he was mad. And in French, <laughs> called me a lot of bad things. And I just pretended like I didn't know anything. You didn't know. <laughs> I didn't understand. <laughs> and it ended up with he, him, another officer came and they escorted me out. <laughs> <laughs> where I could get back on the highway. And I was just like, oh, merci beaucoup. <laughs> like, yeah, thank you so much. I understood 
every word and everything you just called me, but I don't say that to you. So yeah, <laughs> I really do know who can speak your language. I'm just saying. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That was a that was a trip of a lifetime. I got escorted uh, back to the highway by French police. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Th that's, uh, that's that's what is nice about traveling. Those memories that you make, many are unexpected. Things that happen, the adventures that you go on, that are gonna stay with you for the rest of your life. Right. Have have what travel experience of funny kind have you had yourself? Have you had anything happen that was like unexpected, and you're like, "How am I gonna get myself out of this?" Uh. Well, when I was when I was very young, we were uh, traveling with my with my family, mm -hmm. and we were we are six, so it was six kids or no probably one two or maybe one of my brothers was not there. Let's say we were five or four, and then plus my two parents, and it was a small van. So I recall that. We arrived uh, traveling from Lima to to the jungle area, let's say. Both seeing the landscape is changing from the mountains, and then they start seeing the greenery and the waterfalls. So it was beautiful. But we arrived late in the evening, and we were hungry, and we were kind of like moody. So we went to eat, and then we tried. My dad tried to find a hotel, and there were none. So we have to go and spend the night at the river. But something that was kind of like, oh, this is bad. And we were all kind of like tied in the car and then gone. But then <laughs> spending the night at the river turned out being beautiful. Just the sounds of the river. And it's just, you say, things go unexpectedly. If you don't plan ahead, my daddy didn't plan ahead. He just put us in the car. And let's go to this area. And, and he didn't think that he will not be able to find a hotel. But I've been it was full. Too. Uh, actually, in France, yeah. again, with my, my grandmother <laughs> was traveling. We were probably going from Spain because we were crossing the border. And we thought, you know, we're just going to stay the night at a hotel. No problem. And then go to the airport the following morning. Well, we didn't find a hotel or we didn't find the hotel that we had booked. What It was something. And we ended up at the most weird hotel ever where they were just playing weird music. And it wasn't even French music. It was probably like Arabic music. Uh, it was it was a very, very weird place. And I remember both me and my mom. We're three women, you know. I'm, what can I be? Four yeah. Three. And then my mom and my grandmother. You know, it was it was not a safe situation, but we managed to get through it. And and yeah, maybe it would be better to have a travel agent to help us out. <laughs> <laughs> then we call and say, "Where are we? What are we gonna do now? Because we're in trouble." <laughs> yeah. So let's go back to af before and after COVID. When you have to basically, as you self said, relaunch your business, how have you been able to go from nothing to where you are today? What paths and advertising has been the most successful for you to be able to reach out? Well, uh, I did notice that to rebuild something, I was needing to be very consistent because in the past, since it was uh, clients I already have or or uh, referrals that were coming. I was not really focusing at all in social media presence. I didn't care about that. I was saying I don't need it. So I, I didn't have a good social media presence. I didn't have a strategy in my marketing. I didn't have a content that, that will get in to, to generate leads through all my efforts. So I was just having a post here and there. But uh, since COVID happened and I knew I need to rebuild and, and build a good solid business, then I am very focused. My all my marketing tools and all my social media, they are all geared and they are all in tune to to generate leads. So I I 
is, is start spending a lot of time training, learning how to do better social media, and then hiring people to help me with that, with the content generator. And uh, this year, I have joined several networking groups just because I know the fact that even though most of my clients are from other states or has been the pattern, I said, I think it's important to have uh, people in my local area that know me and that can do business with me, that we can collaborate. So I, I saw the importance of, of doing those connections. That's why I started doing this year, 2024, building relationships with other business owners. That's how we met. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> all of us network. And if I hear somebody wants to travel or just specifically a honeymoon or something celebratory, I know who, hey, have you talked to this person? I have the perfect referral for you. Um, so it's it's always good to network. You know, I've said it before that if you don't network and you're a small business person, even if you do it as a hobby, how are you even going to get any kind of clients in the door? Especially if something like COVID happens. Um, yeah. Start to travel again. If you know a, an agent and you want to travel, you know who to go to. So yes, what, yeah. What social media platform has worked the best for you? Which ones are you on? Uh, for me, work best Pinterest and uh, Instagram. Pinterest and Instagram. The brights. Yes, the brights are very very um, determined. I, I will say they choose all their vision for their weddings, all their vision for the the decor and everything in, in Pinterest. And then they come and they say, this is the kind of wedding that I'm looking for. Which hotel will give me this? So ah. that, that, that's why Pinterest is very important in, mm -hmm. in your, when you're in the market. And then Instagram, because Instagram gives you the benefit of having a, I have in my Instagram the link tree that has all my links for my all my channels and, and my blog, and the freebies for them to download. So it's a, it's a tool that, since it's very visual, it's pictures, videos, it's, it's working very well. I'm not big on TikTok. I just created an account because my colleague says it's working and you should do it. If you have a good strategy, it's going to generate you many leads. And I have a friend uh, that all her wedding business just comes from TikTok. Wow. So I'm just still learning, but I, I, I heard it's a good tool if you have a good strategy. Nice. Yeah. TikTok is, you can make a lot of business out of TikTok if you do it the right way. It's a, yes. it's an interesting platform <laughs> to say the least. Yes, I have heard that it's changing because when it just appeared, it was mainly people doing silly scenes, singing or, or dancing or it was not a, it was not like a professional it was more like for young teens or or, or people in their 20s just have fun right. but it, it is changing it is becoming now they are they are companies now that they are using TikTok and they are training or teaching things up there so it's changing which is good for us that we don't want to be dancing or singing there <laughs> So, fun, but I think I'm just a lot steps of, of learning how to use it. <laughs> right. And people had a lot of time on their hands during COVID. And that's, I guess, when TikTok exploded. Um, and Probably, um, yes. TikTok is fun, though. I, I sit and I have an account mm -hmm. too and never up upload much on it. But I sit and scroll and watch what everybody else does. <laughs> get ideas. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. How about Facebook? Is that working well for you? Is it too uh, out there, travel agents out there? I just, honestly, I just have it Facebook because it was my very first uh, social media that I had way back in 2011 when I started my business. And I just keep it, but I don't see a, any, interac any interaction there. Yeah. I, I know many... Uh, travel agents that focus on destination weddings, they have created Facebook groups just specific for the brides where they can communicate with you. 
Mm-hmm. But I was saying, oh, I wouldn't have time to be managing a group. I, I have my hands already in so many things that I wouldn't have that time. So I, I have not created a group. Yeah. But uh, I heard this what is working best, the groups. I am in many brides on Facebook where I interact with the brides, where I make comments or suggestions or answer the questions. But I don't have my own. Yeah. But do you have your own page? Yes, I do have my own page. Yes. We're going to upload and, and post in our blog post on harlequinpodcast.com. You will be able to find all the links to, to Rosanna's uh, social media, Pinterest, and, and everything on there. So go to harlequinpodcast.com and go into the blog post for this episode and you'll find them all there. Awesome. So, what would you recommend me if I come to you and I said, I want to go anywhere in the world, doesn't matter where, just have a nice, relaxing vacation. Where should I go? I will, uh, I like to take my time with my client when somebody comes with a trip idea. Mm-hmm. I always, uh, my process always start with a consultation, a 60 minutes consultation. Where I sit with you and I start asking you questions like, where did you have fun? What What is your past trip look like? Uh, what was your most memorable trip? Uh, what kind of a hotel do you enjoy the most? Uh, what, what, what your dream vacation would look like? So based on your answers, I will find options and I will say, I think this destination will be the best for you because of this or this or this. And then uh, I will ask about your budget, your flexibility on dates. Uh, if you, let's say, you tell me I would like to go in the summer, I, I will probably tell you if you are flexible, maybe you can go by the end of the summer, just like the first or second week of September, just because the price will drop and you will have a better better experience. So I like to take my time to get to know you as a traveler, your past experience, your must have in your trip. So based on that, I can create an itinerary that will be really memorable for you, that you will be really happy. And that it's a, a com- it's based on the budget that you have for that. And if your budget is unrealistic, I will tell you, if you come and you tell me, hey, Rosanna, I want to go to Italy for seven nights and I wanna <laughs> with everything included with with the airfare included yeah. and five star hotels included and the meals and just five thousand dollars. I will tell you that is not realistic. You cannot go. Maybe you can go to an all inclusive five nights all inclusive for that amount, but you're completely different price. Right. So so. It's, that's part of the process of educating because sometimes either you are really naive and you think okay yes i can do this but by this price or you really don't know anything you have any clue and you just say any number or sometimes it could be that you're very tight in your budget and that's all that you can spend so i can show you okay well maybe europe is not for this year but i can take you to a nice hotel in in cancun area for that amount so i'll try to navigate through through what they're doing through through their expectations and try to give them the best within what they have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rosanna. Anything you would like to add before we tie this bag up and land this airplane? Yes, I just would like to say, uh, when you guys are planning something special, something celebratory, uh, especially if you're planning a destination wedding or a honeymoon or just considering, hey, should I get married here in America or should I check what it is to get married in a destination like uh, in Cancun. Just um, schedule a time to chat with me. I, I can guide you and can help you to have a more clear idea what is the best route for you. And it will be my pleasure to help you with that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And as I said, don't forget to check out uh, the blog post where you can find more information, more pictures and all kind of goodies. So if I don't see you online. Um, Have a good two weeks and I will see you in two weeks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.